Hello, everyone. Okay, so we will start the session now. Um, we'll start the session now. The first, the first person uh, to start the session is uh, Ms. Solin Lee. Ms. Solin Lee, who is the Director of the Partnerships Division of the National Library Board of Singapore. Uh, so Ms. Lin Lee is also... Um, uh, was the regional manager for EFLA Asia and Oceania for, uh, for the longest time. And so we will now hear from her for about the Singapore's efforts. Lindy, please. Hello, everyone. I think, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the chair, but Winston is still not online yet. But also the IFLA team, as well as the um, Asia Oceana Regional Office, as well as all the sections as well. Um, I think it's important that he... He actually brought all of us on this platform because I think most of us are from the island country. So together with my fellow speakers, yeah, Tavia and Fatima, as well as Betty, we are all from the same state. And therefore, there is something that we all face in common, which is rising sea level. <laughs> so that is all we are very concerned about. And I think to Singapore is also not sparing of this. We are also equally concerned. So that's why to us, our government is also very, very eager to see how we can address this um, rising challenge that we all have. Okay, so maybe I'll just start sharing my screen on uh, the presentation that I have. Okay. Mm, okay. Yes, so this is what we have for Singapore. Um, I think um, we were very lucky because I think at the time, um, IFA HQ, Stephen, actually alerted us that um, the Singapore uh, government is actually very uh, keen to do this voluntary national review towards to see how we can actually move towards the SDG. So the moment um, Stephen alerted um, us, the National Library Board, as well as the Library Association of Singapore, we actually came in to get in touch with the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs, who was in charge of a kind of driving this entire voluntary national review. So um, how did we do about that? It's because um, it's important that the National Library Board of Singapore, which actually kind of report to the Ministry of Communication and Information, um, um, this is the one that we are in charge of in terms of the library fields. So maybe I'll just share a bit about um, what we are and how we are connected with the rest of the libraries in Singapore. Okay, so as you can see here, Singapore is actually very small. Um, besides um, various, uh, is an island city itself, we actually take care of the National Library. So the National Library Board has the National Library as well as the National Archives of Singapore. At the same time, we manage about 29 public libraries and the partners libraries. And this includes like um, the Singapore Botanic Garden Library, the Lifelong Institution Library as well. And at the same time, um, we had very close relationship with the Council of Chief Librarians. <laughs> So the Council of Chief Librarians um, actually are chief librarians and university librarians from the various um, academic libraries, special libraries, and the government libraries. So we have actually uh, very bi-monthly meetings with them to see how we can work together in terms of um, moving the library profession. Um, at the same time, all of us from the various institutions, the members are from, um, are from all these libraries itself. So we all form the Library Association of Singapore. So currently I'm the Vice President of the Library Association of Singapore. So moving forward, we are hoping to involve more professions or even the paraprofessions to see how the libraries can actually make a better uh, stand in this um, SDG itself. So when we actually um, uh, launched the Libraries and Archive Group in 2025, this is an initiative by the National Library Board Singapore, we share this with the Council of Chief Librarian as well as the Library Association of Singapore. This is a five-year plan on how we want to reimagine the future of libraries and archives and is definitely developed um, in consultation with the public and a lot of partners itself. Key thing is that we wanted to kind of um, invite partners and communities to come on board on this innovation and experimentation. Because we realize that, you know, with all the changing landscape, things can't be really fixed for sure. And thus, we need to kind of um, have proof of concept and test out what these things can be done. 
So for us in this um, libraries um, and archive group in 2025, which we call it lab in short, uh, it also sounds like laboratory because we are also trying and kind of uh, experimenting. We actually developed four key roles. So you, this is what the key roles, four key roles are. We have the learning marketplace, the Singapore storytellers, the informed citizenry, as well as the equalizer. So based on all these four roles, we, we were thinking, hey, actually, our libraries actually have a very, very uh, key places in people's heart. Because we noted that libraries are actually a place for the organizations, be it government agencies or even private companies, is a place where it is a bridge to the people. And thus, we are very strategic in SDG itself, and especially in promoting an SDG and see how SDG can bring to fruition. So we can play very, very strategic role in all the voluntary nas uh, national reviews, especially in preparing it. So what we did was that um, we actually kind of uh, put in to make sure that all our plans, the projects and the activities are all aligned with the SDG roles, which Honestly, I think among all the libraries here, we all know that a lot of things that we do are something that we always make sure that we are the digital, uh, we are the dig we can reach the digital divide and we can be more, uh, make people more inclusive, as well as we are a place as a learning marketplace for people. And at the same time, we also do a lot of information literacy, make sure that our people are informed citizenry and heating, we are the national library as well. So we kind of tell the nation's stories. So we want to bring people together as a united um, identity. So as such, once we weave in all these SDGs in our project and in our plan, we are able to get a lot of um, uh, alignment. And so one example that we had was that um, all these things bring in this SDG on quality education or even like climate change and all these various SDG goals that we have out of the 17 of them. So um, the first one was we did was the revamp of this Chachukang library, because I think in our um, blueprint, our lab 25, we have one key role and we wanted to do is on sustainability. So when we revamped this library itself, um, this Chachukang public library, which is uh, at the north part of Singapore, we decided to focus fully on the sustainability concept. And this is a place that we also want to make sure that the people around that place is interested in sustainable living. So we revamp a lot of new services like bringing in um, AR as well as like um, hydroponic farming and things like that to get people interested and excited about what you do. And this is very, very close to um, like, you know, the um, SDG on climate change itself, especially when people know about that partnership with the relevant um, partners has to come, um, will be very, very welcoming, especially one that we did with the WWF. They actually donated a real sculptures of the tiger in the library itself. So in all, when we put together all the concept, um, um, it's actually a really fully green library. So we were very, very fortunate when we applied for the Green Library Award in IFLA, we kind of won this um, Green Library Award 2022. So with this, um, um, with this award, honestly, we are very happy that we garnered a lot of international as well as local uh, media attention and people are more aware of it. And as well as especially um, our, the ministries and the government is knowing that we are doing a good job, especially in library services, in going closer and moving towards the SDG. With this success story, our next plan was actually to open this fully inclusive library on the, at Hongo Regional Library. So we kind of soft opened it this year and um, very soon, I think next week, we will be making this official opening. So if you are here in Singapore, please, uh, we welcome you to join us. So um, it is going to be our full inc first inclusive library, fully inclusive, because we kind of make use of the assistive technology as well as... Um, um, uh, looking at our floor plan itself and uh, we make sure that our routes and our stations are also wheelchair friendly and we also created thumb ports as well as um, um, accessible collection with braille books and everything to cater to various types of dis uh, disability needs. So um, all these were done in consultation because a lot of communities, we have to involve them. Um, we have actually engaged more than 500 uh, persons with disabilities as well as the caregivers um, to find out what really they need and what they want. 
And at the same time, we also came up with an advisory committee um, in 2019 to check with them whether what we are doing is correct. So after five full years of um, research and things like that, we are finally going to open this this year itself. So um, do join us if you can. And if you happen to come to Singapore, please visit this very, very new library and new edition that we have. So with this new library, it will add up to about 29 public libraries itself. Okay, so um, definitely this um, the inclusive services is not something that we are is new because actually in 2015, we kind of signed an MOU with our this autism resource center. We kind of tried this um set up this digital digitization center with them. So because I was involved in this setting up, um actually um initially when we tried, it's not easy. But um, on the first end of the first year, we noted that actually there's the task, which is on digitization, was very effective. And frankly speaking, with um with these um um people with autism, they are actually much more productive than our normal employees because um uh, I would say that the output is actually three times more. So with this success stories, we actually enlarge the job scope, and they also are now helping us to shelf books at the National Library of Singapore. So that is something that we were very happy and very proud of. But besides this autism, I think um, we also do a lot of uh, nationwide reading because this is definitely the key and core part of what our libraries are supposed to do. Um, I think since 2004, I, uh, I was also the first one who started this project itself with my colleagues itself. We kind of come up with this nationwide reading program for the children with from less advantaged families. Uh, less privileged. So they are more of a low income. And by now, we actually about have 175 clubs across the entire Singapore. So um, I, I would say almost 20 years now, we're going to celebrate our um, 20th anniversary soon. About more than 3,000 children benefited from this children uh, reading program because we strongly believe literacy is something that will change their life. And this is something that's very important to education as well. So I'm very proud that even one of the scholars from the government, one of the government agencies came out actually proclaiming that she was a beneficiary of this reading program. And uh, it's because of this that she has made it today. So uh, I think this is something always very fulfilling for all librarians that we all feel that, hey, we can actually help to give impactful uh, meaning to life of different people. Okay, so um, definitely, uh, this cannot be done uh, just alone with the library. We actually kind of work with many, many ministries to see how we can do this together. So, for example, the Kids Read, we actually work with the Ministry of Complication to promote reading itself. And at the same time, for the uh, um, how to reach out to the underprivileged or even the people persons with disabilities, we work closely with the Ministry of Social and Family Development. So in Singapore, we always go from the whole of government approach to see how we can actually help Singaporeans do uh, reach out to more of them and how to reach, um, and make them embrace all the initiatives that we have. Similarly, this is what we do for digitization because we, at the time, we were helping the whole of government how to do all the um, digitization project to make sure that they convert a lot of their print materials to digital. So with that, um, then you can come up with a, a repository, which is easier for when we do digital services. So um, definitely it's, it's important for us to create this repository of photographs and as well as videos. So putting on my ex um, regional office manager hat, I would always promote that. And uh, if we can, we can put all these very interesting stories and even the photos and um, articles that were done into this library map of the world. Because only together as globally, we can then show the world that the libraries are very important in this um, fulfilling this um, SDG itself. Okay, so I think besides that, we should also leverage on the various uh, platforms like social media platforms and also our traditional media. Um, this definitely include like TikTok. Okay, even though um, the TikTok CEO is a Singaporean, okay, but okay, Sing Singapore is not part of China itself, it's still Southeast Asia. So it's important that we also put all this out there whereby more people would know about what we are doing. Okay, so I think my colleagues have helped to summarize all these things that we have done in these five steps itself. So with that, I end my presentation and I hope that y'all can um, share more or maybe uh, do more exchange later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lin Lee. Um, next, next, next up with another island country and that is Dr. Tantvir from the 
Fiji. Okay. He's the director of the Library of Services of Fiji. Doctor, please. Um, you are you are muted. You need to unmute yourself. On behalf of Ms. Tulia, I am presenting uh, what she has prepared. And here, okay. I hope this presentation is visible to you all. Okay. Uh, this is very new uh, for me, but I have supported uh, Ms. Tulia and uh, uh, Ms. Nina when they requested about the data from the ministry. I have guided at uh, every level where they need me. The topic is the strategies. The strategy is uh, government libraries in providing evidence support the preparation of voluntary national review for Fiji. Here, this is the outline she prepared. Introduction, role of libraries, process, challenges, and way forward. Here, if we are classifying library, so we can classify library like the academic library, school library, and you know, a special library. So here, she mentioned uh, types and role of government libraries here. Libraries of legislature and executives and judiciary. Uh, in legislature, you can see the parliament library in execute with the government libraries and other special libraries and departmental libraries. Whereas in, jud in judiciary, you know, legal practitioners where the law firm libraries. And very recently, they have convened one meeting in regards of supporting to the SG as DGC, uh, Sustainable Development Goal 4. This is the priority here in Fiji. And that's why they have convened the meeting and they invited me as well as they invited the finance, Ministry of Finance. And Ministry of Finance guided us how we can collect data, how we can present data, and how we can achieve our targets. Because uh, next month, uh, here in Fiji, we are going to have a National Economic Summit. So they have planned to present this presentation there as well. And under the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Education is following FEMIS. FEMIS stands for FEMIS Education Management Information System from where we can collect data about how many libraries we have in the schools, how many corners we have in the schools, and the enrollment and the, you know, the status of the librarians in primary, secondary, and early childhood centers. This is the scenario here right now. In regards of least graduates in school libraries, in early childhood, you can see seven, seven certificate and diploma holder are available in early childhood centers, whereas in primary 54 and in secondary 22 librarians having certificate and diploma. And here, in regards of literacy and numeracy, 
in the country. So this is the status of school, schools with library here. You can see how many schools have libraries right now. The data is demonstrating itself. In primary, we have 737 primary schools, but out of, out of 737, we have 60, 611 libraries in primary schools. And we have 176 secondary schools. And mostly have libraries. And this is the technical college scenario and vocational college. Apart from this, if you are going to divide it by division as Eastern, Central, Western, and Northern, so you can see the data presented in the table. So ECE, we have 93 schools and Eastern 34, Northern 63. These are attached libraries with primary schools. In some schools, the ECE center is attached with the primary school libraries. So they are sharing ECE and primary. And the secondary, they have their own libraries. So you can see the grand total of libraries here. This data came from FEMIS. And number of school libraries organized by Library Services of Fiji from 2015 to 2019. So data is showing here. Prime in 2015, Library Services organized 83 libraries. In organizing libraries, Library Services provides or supplying books, furniture, as well as shelves in the libraries. The same thing is happening to the secondary library. And this is the scenario here. So li library services is taking the strategic role in providing this kind of services in the libraries. So you can see the data from 2015 to 2019. And now LSF established 384 libraries altogether from ECE to secondary. And this is the read to lead project data presented here by my colleagues. A uh, read to lead project started in 2015. And through this project, library services had distributed a number of titles in schools. So you can see the schools in 2015, LSF covered 110 schools. In 2016, 240 schools. In 17, 132 schools. Whereas in, two, in 2018, 110 schools. In 2019, 116 schools. And in 2020, 79 schools. And in 21, they have 
supplied this title to 115 schools. And here, if we are coming out from the academic libraries or school libraries, so we are switching over to the uh, next uh, SGD5, gender equality. So under this, you know, my colleague targeted equal right to economic resources under the gender equality. So here, LSF playing a vital role in establishing the community libraries across country to run functional literacy program in villages. So LSF has established 28 community information center and facilitated to 359 women in regards of participating in the functional literacy program. You can see the picture, how they are transforming their lives. So there is a storytelling. Sorry, there is a noise from here. And these are the challenges. She has come up with these challenges, lack of awareness, data collection, planning, and so on. And this is the way forward. Right now, LSF in process of reviewing national school library policy. Under school library policy, every school must have a library. And a student should have access to information and books. Another project LSF is on the way of migration from soft liberty to Koha because of the financial constraint here. And on the same time, we are saving money and we want to use that money in regards of switching over to the electronic resources. Right now, Odilo database trial is activated to curriculum advisory services and primary and secondary staff units. And apart from this, LSF is also on the way of having MOUs with reputed organization from where they want some sort of funding or assistance to achieve its goal. And the training program is continued to library staff, whether this is in-house or we are nominating to them to other training and workshops. And book drives, many or NGOs are uh, want to collaborate with LSF in regards of running book drives program. But we are very careful. We don't want any political involvement in that. So, you know, we are signing a consent before going ahead. In this way, we will run the book drives. And we are also receiving some donation from Australia. Some donors has already donated books. They are coming forward to help us in regards of fixing our ongoing problems or ensuring libraries in every school. Thank you very much. And this is some, uh, she has uh, included some pictures of uh, Una South District School before and after the situation. 
and the last picture is showing the latest. Thank you very much, Tanvir. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Tanvir. Thank you very thank much. You. So, uh, Winston, are you able to be uh, on camera and and speaking? Okay, if not, uh, we will quickly go over to Maldives and we, we now have the presentation from Ms. Fatima Shaham. She is the Director General of the National Library of Maldives. And uh, I, I, would, I would like to plead with the next two presenters. We have a 10 minute mark, so because uh, we have a time constraint. So thank you very much. Uh, we will now hear from Maldives. Hi, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can, but uh, can you please put it on the presentation? Oh, yes, that's great. Super. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Salam, it's wonderful to be here and hearing about uh, the work being done in Singapore and Fiji and everything. It's really nice. Lots of lessons being learned. So from the Maldives, I will just be pre uh, presenting uh, what we have done so far in terms of uh, the National Library is a government library and what our experience with the VNR. So thank you. And uh, I would like to thank IFLA for this opportunity as well before going forward. So a bit of context before we move forward. forward. I think everyone knows a bit about Maldives. There's a very nice holiday destination. Uh, in addition, I'll be talking about the libraries in Maldives and especially the National Library, share some statistics as well, and how uh, we came into this and how IFLA has helped us to go forward with uh, getting or knowing more about the SDGs and the current VNR experience and our way forward. So here I'm just sharing a picture of the children's library, which also falls under the National Library. So as you rather than working individually in these things. And uh, we, we have about 1,190 islands of which people live in about 187 islands. Interestingly, uh, we also have about the same number of resort, resorts now. So, and tourism rate, literacy rate, which helps in basic literacy, reading and writing. But then now we need to think more about critical information and literacy. So when you look at the libraries in Maldives, uh, the National Library usually in other countries, uh, it functions uh, separately, but it also uh, functions as the main public library. And uh, we give services for from ages two and a half and up and above that. We have a few un university libraries, some college libraries, but the most, the higher number is for school libraries. Uh, which make up almost 75% of the libraries in the country. And recently, well, not sorry, uh, under the Decentralization Act, uh, islands and atolls are supposed to have a public library. So there's been work done to develop uh, lo local council libraries. And there are a few passionate individuals who have their own libraries as well. And uh, in addition, I would have, say the government libraries are also there, but they have been phasing out in terms of it's difficult to manage uh, libraries in government offices. So they usually donate the books to the national library. <laughs> so the library was established in 1945. So we have a long history and uh, we uh, cater to the public through our national collection, which has uh, all the old materials and under the Legal Deposit Act, we also get copies of the uh, books which are published in the Maldives and the Divehi lo local Divehi collection and an English collection. We do give out uh, different services, uh, internet, Wi-Fi, photocopying, scanning and uh, internships and access to e-resources. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a lot of children's programs in the children's library as well. 
Uh, currently, we come under the Ministry of Arts, Culture and Heritage, uh, which also ha has the other memory institutions like the archives, the museum, the National Center for the Arts and the Art Gallery. And uh, this is our current uh, space. So I just want to share a bit of the library usage statistics. Uh, uh, you can see uh, this is about borrowing and returning books, and you can see the dip in 2020 and 2021 due to the COVID. And there were online services being carried out at that time. And then in 2022, we started like coming up, but we did close, like partially close the library for renovation as we got a CSR grant from our main bank. So we hope next year and this year it will be better we will have better statistics and inquiries. And then these are the library visits. You can again see the dip in the 2022 and 2021. So this is a basic background of our libraries and how we kick started, I would say again, to work with IFLA and we were able to learn a lot with the IFLA Regional Workshop of Asia and Russia in November, 2022. And after that meeting, we got a lot of mentoring advice and tools and resources to how, how to engage at a national level to uh, continue with our mission. So we reached out to the UN stakeholders, UN uh, residents in Maldives, and through them, uh, we were able to participate in the VNR through the government also, the government, uh, the VNR is done under the Ministry of National Planning, Housing and Infrastructure. They are the main body which does the VNR, but we actually got an extra opportunity. So me and my colleague Zulhana, she's in the meeting, I think, and we, we, we were able to participate in the three different themes, which, and when the VNR took place, which was the economic inclusion and resiliency, environment, climate, and climate adaptation, and social well-being. So we were able to get a very uh, clear uh, idea of all the, I would say, the issues, concerns, risks, and all the factors surrounding the VNR, and how we can go forward, and all the planning happened. We were in, we were there, and the keyword of, I would say, as a librarian, <laughs> libraries was being discussed at the VNR. And this was a very big thing for us uh, to go forward. And so because of the VNR, uh, what we have noticed is, in this case, the National Library got the opportunity to discuss about the implications of uh, libraries and the importance of having an impartial information space at both economic, social, and uh, economic, and in all those three categories. And uh, because of this, we were able to even share through IFLA the success stories of libraries, which has already joined the VNR and how they have gone about it. And we are also planning to link our library strategies to SDGs. Currently, there's a lot of programming done, but we don't, we just do it individually rather than. Uh, uh, linking it with a CSO or a government body, as mentioned by, by Lindsay, that it's very important to form partnerships and do the work. And also, we were able to pass the important message of uh, library acting as a data and knowledge hub and repository for the community in Maldives, which do the research. And we were, I think, the biggest uh, interesting opportunity was being in the same room as people who were actually doing it and who needed to monitor it and seeing all the challenges come out. And during the VNR sessions, it was very interesting because you start early at 8.30 and then by 12, everything starts coming out. <laughs> we'll be brainstorming and then at that time, everyone knows, okay, yeah, this is why this is working. This is why this is not working. So everything came out at that time. Uh, so it was a very nice uh, session. And uh, additionally, we saw people who were like champions uh, through in the CSOs or in the government bodies. So uh, the library, uh, we were thinking of uh, aligning with them and working together. 
So one such party is the Maldives Library Association, which is also the only library association in the Maldives which deals with libraries. And uh, recently, even with the IFLA engagement, uh, uh, one of our colleagues have gone to the meeting in Thailand recently for this through this collaboration. And the other interesting case is water care. I'll just share about it in a short while. So ultimately we want to be very much part of the IFLA SDG conversation and also be active in this. So this is the case study I just wanted to share in terms of, this is one CSO and, and it's very interesting how they even presented the case. Like they, we, they work with SDG six, that's it. So very focused, very outcome based and also based on evidence and we were able to, we had the VNR session in March 15, 16, and 19th. And then very actively, we had the World Water Day. So we celebrated it on the 22nd of March with the CSO. And we noticed that the CSOs are very, there are a lot of CSOs who wants to work with the library as uh, Lindley mentioned the, the like have different special needs CSOs which need to work and the space they need. So there's a lots of opportunities uh, to see what we can do when we go forward. So thank you so much. That was my sharing session about our experience so far. Thank you so much, Basima. Right, okay. so uh, time is short now and we will go straight to Betty Williams. Betty Williams is from the Library of Reserve Banks of Vanuatu. So Betty, you're next. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, do, do you have my presentation there? Do you have my presentation, Tori? Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hello from Vanuatu. It's, uh, it's going towards 5 p.m. here in Vanuatu. Uh, I'm Patty Williams, and I will be speaking uh, about the uh, strategic role of government libraries in providing evidence to the uh, uh, voluntary national reviews. Uh, it, this is a new thing for us here in, in Vanuatu, I guess that's our first time. Um, so, Reserve um, Bank of Vanuatu is a central bank, and uh, we are categorized as a special library. Um, to, to let you know, to tell you more, a little bit about Vanuatu, Vanuatu is uh, about 83 countries, uh, 83 islands scattered all over the, the uh, Vanuatu and it's divided into six provinces. And this uh, uh, six provinces is, is, uh, is represented by a group of islands that's grouped together. Um, um, Vanuatu is also to, to, to um, destination country in the South Pacific, and it's uh, it's uh, it's prone to natural disaster like uh, cyclone and earthquakes and tsunami. Um, uh, the provincial structure includes the president, the secretary general, and area councils that administrated the provincial affairs for each province. Um, mainly, there are there are nine uh, government ministries in total for Vanuatu government working together to advance advance their fair distribution and and to focus on the um, on the uh, uh, Vanuatu 2030 the people's plan it's its population is around 334,506 it's representing around 82 of the Vanuatu and population 
and uh, a literacy rate is around 89.10% on an annual crop basis on 1.59%. Uh, in Vanuatu, uh, especially in the capital, we have a Vanuatu Library the non-profit organization, non-political, and it's uh, usually owned and, and uh, run by administrated through annual membership subscription fees. Um, you go to the next slide. Okay, um, I've had great, great stories from uh, Singapore and uh, Maltevis. Um, um, we in Vanuatu are uh, a uh, uh, bit running behind, uh, but we are um, participating in involving in the some of the SDGs. Um, before becoming a, a member of the Pacific Library Networks, that is when it, uh, the first time we heard about the libraries and SDGs. So before we, we, we become the member of um, uh, Pacific Libraries Network, we, we have no idea about, uh, we were all, all doing the, um, our library services and programs in our own ways. We didn't know that we are directly uh, involved with SDGs. Um, after when we were exposed to the Pacific Library Network, that is when some of us became aware of the, the overall IFLA that's very important about uh, advocating for libraries and SDGs. So um, we involve uh, three members of the Vanuatu Library Association that is including one from the National Library of Vanuatu and myself, Edo Rizopeng of Vanuatu as a special library and another representative for VLA representing Supreme Court of Library. So we, we, we came back with a strong will to inspire, engage, enable, and connect. And um, we were able to uh, identify that uh, maybe some of the, the library services that we to every day, it's a traditional way of doing things. So we, we became aware that we need to run a wider library programs and services to link with the SDG in a more inspired, innovative library and um, uh, SDGs initiative. So um, uh, some of the, um, when when we when we were with the Pacific Library Network, uh, I know Fiji is really ahead of us in Vanuatu here, but when we were with the Pacific Library Network, we took out one very strong um, takeaway from the Pacific Library Network because from the uh, Pacific Library Network. Uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, the strategic action plan for Pacific Library Networks, we come up with a, uh, uh, some of the um, challenges that we're facing in Vanuatu. For example, in Vanuatu, uh, 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 libraries are not well recognized unless they have a, have a proper legislation or act in place. Um, uh, so when we came back, um, uh, uh, Reserve Bank, as a central banker, um, because we have the fund, so we think it, it's very appropriate and a, and a, and a, um, a good initiative to support the National Library and the Vanuatu Library Association to fund and also one day successful workshop, whereby um, uh, uh, the power of partnership and collaboration was highlighted in launching a, a Vanuatu uh, Friends of the Libraries, which uh, involves the current Honorable Minister of Climate Change as the patron for the Vanuatu Friends of the Library. Um, a, a, res a resolution discussion was pointed out through during this workshop that was funded by Reserve Bank of Vanuatu was on the uh, ongoing uh, insufficient uh, library 
departed and funds throughout Vanuatu. Um, we couldn't have a, an adequate uh, fund or budget for for libraries to operate and function because we do not have a um, an act uh, to be able to give us the power. So um, during this workshop, it was pointed out that uh, that this is a way for uh, forward for for VLA and for national library and all government libraries. And uh, and also the the uh, libraries, uh, the school libraries. Um, so uh, um, one of the another um, involvement for the research bank of Vanuatu Library is that it it partnership with the national library uh, as a um, second step second step to embark on a journey to develop a legal framework and contacted a wider consultation around, around the islands of Vanuatu for a proposed uh, Library Services Act. That is back in 2018 when we started the, to present the issue paper and, and uh, a framework and, and, uh, and now it is in its second draft to be passed in the parliament this year. Uh, therefore, um, uh, the, the, the Reserve Bank Library and, and other libraries around Port Vila, since it is the capital uh, of Vanuatu, I think they are developing and running the programs and activities to, 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 to promote some of the SDGs. Um, so for example, um, let me go to the second slide. So be before I um, talk about more about the, the libraries as a whole, I, I just want to bring out some of our uh, our, our, our VLA, uh, some of the things that uh, we as a VLA, uh, Vanuatu Library Association, we wanted to, to see or our way forward. So uh, we, we wanted to, our vision is we wanted to build a stronger library association and library networks in Vanuatu around, around the world. Uh, um, we couldn't do that if, if we couldn't develop more if we, we, we cannot achieve this uh, vision. Our mission is, is to empower libraries as important uh, institution to increase uh, access and the usage of quality library services for the unsafe, underserve, guided by proper legislation, as I, I have mentioned, and proper establishment. Talking about building with uh, with cyclone proof and earthquake proof, and a global advocacy for sustainable, inclusive li library services for all in Vanuatu. Um, one of our, our objectives is is here uh, is is to provide um, to provide the all since since one of our aim is to to try as much as possible to to involve the VLA, the Vanuatu Library Association, to involve not only the library, the existing and active libraries that are now uh, established, but to reach out to the to the school libraries and our, and, and prov provincial libraries and, and community libraries to ensure that everyone is a member of VLA so that we can um, um, uh, have more VLA members and then we can provide the right to tools and resources to develop capacity building and technical support in terms of uh, in sorry through through networking sharing and implementations of libraries SDGs or NSS and SDGs uh, initiatives. Uh, hi Betty. Hi Betty. Just uh, we we need to quickly sum up. So maybe uh, one more minute. Ken? Yes. So um, the, I just mentioned a little bit about the people's plan. The people's plan is uh, is uh, redeveloped by the Department of Strategic uh, Policy and Planning and Aid Coordination this back uh, under the office of the Prime Minister. This uh, people's plan is taken out from the SDGs. And it is tailored and, and fitted locally for for our uh, 
for us to be able to deliver on that. So when we're talking about this, uh, we have three pillars here, three main pillars. So we have society pillar, environment pillar, and economic pillar. So for a, a, a research bank, the, the pillar would be the economic pillar. But the research bank library, uh, uh, for our uh, experience, we are not only focusing on the economic pillar to reach out to, to uh, run a financial literacy. We also um, run programs that fit the environment pillar and the society pillar for quality education and um, clean environment. Okay, so I think uh, so I take it that uh, we are done for the, all the presentations. Thank you very much, Betty. Um, so we now come to the Q&A session now. All right. Um, and we have a question from Winston, uh, who unfortunately is unable to get on to this, to, to, be, mute, to be online. Uh, his question would be for all the panelists, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick one minute for everyone. Uh, we'll start with Singapore, then we will go on to uh, Fiji, and then we'll go to Maldives, and then we will go to uh, uh, Betty from Vanuatu. So, right? The question from Winston is, what is your advice to other national libraries and associations um, needing, needing giving uh, sector data to officials for their VNR? Right. What and what should they focus on? So my question again, I repeat, what is your advice to other national libraries? I think also in libraries in general and associations needing to give sector data to officials for their VNR and what should they focus on? So we should go with Lindley first. You got a minute. Okay, I think for Singapore, we always go for a whole government approach. So actually, we have this uh, whole government data sharing as well. So that's something that we work with different agencies. And um, for us, we do make sure that when we provide some of the data to these government agencies, we have to inform them about the personal data security and things like that to make sure that the, some of the personal data are not leaked out. And um, for us, we actually focus a lot on the reach of the libraries, such as you know if they work with the partners with the libraries, what are the visitorship and who are the people and how many people would be rich? So that is a win-win situation for both the, uh, the libraries as well as the partnering organizations, including the government agencies. So they know that, as I mentioned, um, libraries are like the bridge for the, um, for the organizations to the people. So um, by giving them the data on that rich portion, not only help them, but it also help us as well. So I would focus on more on that rich portion. Yeah, that's all. Okay, and uh, what's, what would be your answer from Fiji? You got a minute. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, in regards of uh, providing the data for VNR, uh, ministry has taken already a step in providing, the, but you have seen the data that came from the, you know, uh, Fiji. Uh, from FEMIS, that is a you know that is a management system for all the schools, and you know asking all the head teachers to update their you know school data, in regards of library data, librarians and books, each and everything that come from the you know Ministry of Education, and there is a there is a process of getting this kind of data because ethics is behind that. That's why I am. I have already mentioned uh, that I have helped to get this data to Nina and to my colleague Tulia. Okay, when they when they really uh, showed their concern, okay, they are they want that this data for for SD, uh, SGDC. So I supported them to get this data because there is a process and right approach always works. You know that, that's all. You know. Ministry is not holding the data, but the right approach always works. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanya. Now we will move to Maldives, Fatima. Oh, thank you very much. Like you mentioned, data is very important. Uh, but uh, we would, but during the VNR 
VNR process and also what we saw was that the Maldives Bureau of Statistics was playing a lead role with the planning ministry regarding the collecting the data. So uh, two-step two approach, focus on the current data with the, which the National Library has in terms of usage. And what we can do is we can focus on uh, each uh, SDG separately and see uh, how much people are uh, searching for or inquiring about this data through the libraries, through these uh, different SDGs. And also we need to have uh, expert uh, uh, documents or advice or uh, experts in terms of even uh, subject experts coming and sharing this information. So it could be a very actionable data where the data is already in the library and also the data is uh, how the data is being used by the uh, people to get to their to achieve their daily goals. Yes. Thank you, Ashwatina. Yes, we cannot stress never enough that data data is very important so last but not least betty of one or two betty betty you need to mute unmute yourself okay thank you um uh, before uh giving my presentation i was uh I tried to contact the Ministry of Education for a to collect a data about all the school libraries that have uh, uh, a permanent uh, cyclone-proof building. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't come to me earlier. Um, we will we will try to get those uh, those uh, data and um, try to. Um, uh, separated to the uh, active libraries, as I mentioned, there are, there are few government uh, libraries uh, currently uh, operating now in Phila. That's probably uh, below ten, and uh, they do have their usage data of how many how many people using those particular libraries. And uh, and the programs and the activities that they uh, they carry out in terms of SDGs to to carry to, to put across the information and also the awareness to the to the uh, to the uh, public the population of Portfila and also to the public at large. So. Uh, most of the data would, would usually comes from the students researching on those particular government libraries for their for their uh, learning needs. Um, we haven't collected any data for for uh, special needs and the very old people visiting uh, from the islands, but we do have some other reserve bank whereby we have collected some data where they have a research at the reserve bank and they have come in person to learn something about the importance of information and, and uh, having that power to, to make a decision of where to go to, to access a product in terms of financial uh, literacy. So at the moment, um, we have no we have no data uh, from the Ministry of Education, but hopefully we will try to reach out to the Ministry of Education as they run the the school libraries and probably will 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 put that across next time. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Right, so we are we are on the mark. Uh, actually, we are two minutes late. <laughs> um, so thank you much, everyone, for being wonderful panelists and being wonderful audience. And I also see there are some questions also, but unfortunately, we have no time to get to them. Um, if you do have the questions, you can, um, and if you know all any of the panelists, maybe it would be best if you can write into them. If if not, uh, we can also write into Winston, uh, or if you can write into myself, uh, I can be found. I'm my name is Michelle from the EFLA regional office, and I can be found on emails Michelle underscore Lao at nlb.gov.sg. Now, I also want to do a bit of advertisement for the EFLA regional office, uh, a regional, regional division, which is we are going to have a Northeast Asia libraries. Uh, UN SDG webinar uh, is going to be on the 26th of April. Uh, Tina Young, 
uh, has put the link in the chat. So everybody, please, if you are interested to know more about what the Northeast Asian Libraries are doing, uh, please do go in and register now. So uh, without further ado, I will end this session.